And out of his love, he creates a need in your life in order for you to get up for that tahajjud. That was the invitation. It came to you through a difficulty, through a hardship. You never ever tasted the sweetness of tahajjud until you had a challenge that you felt nobody can solve and resolve. Now you got up and you're crying. Allah says, I love you so much. Look at you. You've come to me. You are broken. You are softened. You're worshiping me. You're asking me just that much is building your paradise. Whether Allah gave you what you wanted on earth or not is irrelevant. Do you agree? If Allah loves me because I got up for tahajjud and I cried and I wept for my needs and he knew he was not going to give me the needs, but he knows that because of such a powerful, sincere, genuine act of worship and such lovely, beautiful, sincere, warm tears, rolling down your cheeks because of that i'm going to give this person paradise do you really mind whether or not he gives you what you were actually asking for if it was related to this world i don't care do you get what i'm saying didn't i start off by asking you a question which is more important and don't lie you guys were dilly dallying with that answer <laughs> But the reason I asked it was to get back to it all the time, to tell you, you know what, this world, you're going to cry, you're going to do things, you're going to have hardship, difficulty, whatever it may be. But Allah Almighty knows when you process it the right way, you have the best of this world. What is the best of this world? Is the best of this world not including the tahajjud? Is the best of this world not including the dua to Allah? Is the best of this world not the connection with Allah? Is that not the best of this world? Yes, but over and above that, because I'm a human, I also want a little bit of comfort on earth. May Allah grant us good jobs and good income. May Allah Almighty provide us with sustenance so that we don't depend on anyone but Him. Amen. That Amin was very loud. Did you notice? <laughs> Subhanallah, Rabbil Al. It's important. It's important. We are Muslims. We are honored. We are taught to strike a balance. It's not correct for you to divorce yourself from the earth. Because you also need to get married. May Allah make it easy for those who are not married to get married. Amen. All the married guys are saying Amen. All the married guys are saying Amen. You guys better be careful, man. Mashallah. While well, we're saying Amen for those who need to get married, inshallah. <laughs> Sheikh, don't hold it against me, Sheikh. Mashallah. You might have other plans. But it's true, you want to get married and you want to look after your children, your spouse, your family members. You want to create a little bit of comfort for them. Many parents, you ask them, why are you earning? Say, for my kids. You know, a little bit for myself, but more so for my kids. I'm going to do this for my child and that for my child. Wallahi, do you really think Allah who created you and your father is going to abandon you? But Allah tells you, oh son of Adam, adjust to the level I've kept you on. Be happy. I've kept you on a level. Don't look at those who have more in terms of worldly belongings because you won't be able to appreciate what you have. Rather look at those who have less so that you can say, I'm favored by Allah. That's what Allah tells you. The problem with today's world that is filled with social media is comparison. Comparison. You see someone who's showing you something they don't have, pretending like they have it. And through that pretense, your life has become a misery. Because you don't know their life is already a misery. It's photoshopped. And not only that, it's artificial intelligence and whatever else it may be. You are thinking they have the happiness that you are looking at them and believing they have it. And they are desperately looking at your real life and hoping that they could have yours. And you are so depressed because you think that they have what they don't have that you want. Allahu Akbar. So complicated, so confusing, but that's the life. So don't compare what you see on social media stays on social media. It doesn't come into your heart and your system. You see, 
the comparisons people show you they're driving a Lamborghini I promise you sometimes it's not even a Lamborghini it's called a green screen ask me <laughs> yes it is you know what's a green screen if you don't know find out <laughs> only problem is you might become one of those you know but it's a fact they're showing you something that's non-existent don't be depressed Allah's given you the best of this world when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to crush the enemy in Ta'if, wallahi, he, he chose not to. You and I, you have a problem with your blood brother. Oh Allah, destroy him, break him, finish him. Or, you know, make sure that he doesn't ever come up again. Finish him up. That's your brother. Which Nabi are you following by the way? Which prophet are you proud of and you following? Who's your Nabi? Are you going to follow him to say, Oh Allah, soften his heart. I have a problem. We are going to try and sort it out. I'm going to do this and Oh Allah, soften his heart. Soften our hearts. Make an attempt once, twice, ten times. He doesn't want to talk to you. She doesn't want to talk to you. Your brother, your sister, whoever it may be, your uncle, your aunt, your in-laws, your outlaws, all of those. Are you going to try? Are you going to try? If you're going to try, Wallahi, you, your trial is your paradise. That's what you forget about. What's going to happen? I don't know. Allah knows. Did I try twice? Christ, he swore me. He insulted me. No problem. That's my brother. I'm going to try again. And you solve the problem. I'm not saying that just give up to injustice in a way that is going to be repeated again and again and again. I mean, every time you meet him, he hits you with a rod. Doesn't mean you must go back and try. He'll hit you again with a rod, my brother. <laughs> What we mean is common logic and common sense. So my brothers, my sisters, take a look at what is the best of this world. You already have it. Subhanallah. You already have it. Don't you have the deen of Allah? Aren't you in the house of Allah? Didn't you just fulfill salah? Didn't Allah Almighty say through the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The closest that a slave is to his Lord is when he's in prostration. Didn't you prostrate just now? Is that not the closest posture and position you can ever get to? To Allah. Subhanallah. You have something moving for you, man. Are we not eating and drinking no matter what the condition is of the food? As long as it's halal, it's good. If a man is eating for 50 rands or 25 rands, Wallahi, he'll fill his belly perhaps sometimes better and more than those who go for fine dining. You know what's fine dining? 500 rands and they give you one prawn. I promise you. And, and they put a little design of avocado sauce around there. And you look at it, you say, where did my money go? I'd rather go for the pup and vegetable that they give for 10 rands down the road. Do you understand what I mean? So it's all relative. It's all relative. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness and ease. May Allah open our doors. You have the best. You have the goodness of this world if you have the deen of Allah. But work hard to achieve that which will benefit you on earth. You want to buy a house. You want to buy a car. You want to have good things. You must get up in the morning. Number one, salah. Number two, you must make sure that you go to work. You don't have a job. Look for a job. How long for? For as long as it takes, don't don't give up. I know people who've looked for job for six years. A guy that I know looked for a job for six whole years, and we kept telling him, "Don't lose hope." He said, "Come on, don't lose hope." Up to when? He said, well, "Whatever long it takes, however long it takes." He ended up buying and selling things. Trust me, he became a millionaire. Last year, he told me, "I made my first million." Allah, Allah Yazid and Ajami and Ya Sheikh, may Allah grant all of us goodness. No, those millions were not Zimbabwean dollars, by the way. <laughs> the whole world knows about Zimbabwe. <laughs> but I tell you, my brothers and sisters, what is the moral of it? Sometimes Allah stretches and prolongs your desperation and your need because he wants you to continue crying to him calling he loved you that way it changed you it made you a better person six years was enough we became people who are regular with salah we changed our lives we cut our sons we we spent more time with our families subhanallah when allah gives you the feeling within your heart that you need to spend time with your family it's a sign that you have the best of this world one of the signs
جسد أسماؤه وتعالى وأكون للوطن الحبيب مشيدا 